In the beginning of 2022, I did something totally different in regards to goal setting. So many of us set goals with wonderful intentions, but by January 17th, it's titled National Quitters Day, most people have fallen off from their goals. One, because they don't really have a path to be able to reach them, or two, they get so overwhelmed that they just throw in that proverbial towel. So I was done with getting on this goal setting cycle where I set these goals, felt really inspired, and then all of a sudden fell off. And I decided to set what I call a domino goal. So a domino goal is essentially a goal that you set that hits all the areas of your life with just one goal. So the goal that I set for 2022 was to have a calm and regulated nervous system. And when I set this goal, I my, my, my plan, my idea, my process was that if I had a calm and regulated nervous system, I'd show up as a better parent. If I had a calm and regulated nervous system, I'd show up as a better coach. If I had a calm and regulated nervous system, I just would be a better version of me and all of these other things would fall in place. And while I thought that, the goal has changed my life in ways that I can't even put into words. And one of the best outcomes from setting this goal in the beginning of 2022 was me being able to trust myself. And so today what I want to dive in and talk about is how you can begin to trust your intuition. The first step is to tune into your intuition. We all have it, whether it's an inner knowing, whether it's a gut feeling, whether it's the sign or vivid images that you see, we all have it but we often try to circumvent it or avoid it or blow it off as like some random coincidence. But this inner knowing shows up and helps us to make sense of things when we can't even put words to it, when we can't even conceptualize it all at once. It essentially gives an answer to a question before it can be you know, translated into language or into thought. And that's what I love so much about it. So for me, sometimes it's just this deep inner knowing where it doesn't make sense to anyone else, but I just know it. Other times for me, it's confirmation that takes place in my external surroundings. So just yesterday, I was asking myself a question about a business investment. And as I was driving my daughter to track, the car in front of me had a license plate. And I don't remember the letters, but the license plate said 888. And anytime I see angel numbers, it's just confirmation that I'm on the right track. And maybe for you, it's a question that you asked yourself, like, should I take this leap of faith? And then you're driving and you see a big sign that says, there's nothing wrong with taking a leap. Come to join our hotel here. Or whatever but it's just that confirmation because here's the reality there's no such thing as coincidence just divine timing and so these little intuitive nudges and these little like feelings gut feelings and just being drawn to stuff is actually your intuition speaking the next thing is to pay attention to what's happening inside of you as you become more aware of your thoughts and your feelings and your sensation you can develop your intuition by noticing what's taking place inside of you. If a situation arises and you're called to make a decision based on what's happening inside of you, you can feel drawn to it or drawn away from it. There's so much power and there's so much inner knowing that takes place inside of your body. Feelings such as joy or sadness or anger or different sensations that are taking place in our body are actually informing us about what we're experiencing in our external world. So this could be a trigger. We could be feeling activated because of a place, because of a person, because of something that's happening. And so your body is telling you how you're feeling in response to it. The important thing with this is you should allow yourself to be curious about your sensations and your feelings because as you're practicing tuning into your intuition and as you have these experiences come up, it's important to remember that you don't want to judge. It's all a part of the human experience. We're supposed to have a vast array of emotions that take place in our body, but we're also supposed to allow our emotions to be something that we're reflecting on, something that we're learning from. For me, I would always feel triggered by this certain smell. And I remember like not even like paying attention to like, okay, it just kind of gave me a headache, but I didn't think anything of it. And then recently I found out I was actually allergic to it. When I say that your body is all knowing, it is truly, all knowing and there's so much wisdom and so when we turn off those emotions and when we turn off paying attention to them we actually turn off what our body is trying to tell us and it weakens our ability to access our intuition when we're not giving ourselves permission to lean into it and to trust ourselves one of the things that I do when I'm noticing like heavy emotions is I journal because when you journal about your feelings, your thoughts and your process, you may start to notice observations that were not consciously something you were aware of. So let's say, for example, you notice that you're just really grumpy every single Monday morning with your kids and you're impatient as you're getting ready to go to work and you're taking them to school and you just seem to be short. 
And then the more you journal about it, you realize that every Sunday you're having happy hour with your friends and maybe you're just staying out way too late. While you may not consciously recognize that the emotions and the way that you're responding is actually teaching you something. So being able to journal helps you to take all of the thoughts and the processes that you have up here, put it onto paper, and to be able to rationalize and make sense of it as you're looking it over. It's almost like writing a book. You have all these ideas and then you it turns into word vomit and then you organize it and it comes into a beautiful product. It's the same thing. You have this like model of your world where you're really laser focused and then you take it and you put it on paper, paper and you get to see things from different perspectives and then you get to make changes based on what it is that your body is telling you and based on the deep reflection that you've done. Another strategy that I often do is I'll take a step back. And this year, one of the things that I've done to help create a calm and regulated nervous system is I started to study the mind and the body, the brain, the brain and the body connection and somatic work and somatic practices. And so when I take a step back, I do a lot of deep breathing. I do a lot of tapping. I do a lot of different somatic practices like such as self-touch and things like this. And what it does is it helps me to create a calm and regulated nervous system by bringing me back to the here and the now, by allowing me to see that I'm safe. The way that our brain works is we have this prefrontal cortex part of our brain. And the prefrontal cortex part of our brain is the rational part of our brain. And when we're triggered, when we're activated, and when we have these different experiences, our prefrontal cortex goes offline. And then we can no longer ration our way in to making a decision or ration our way in to calming down. So doing different somatic practices and taking a step back, um, doing practices like deep breathing or tapping or self-touch or things of that nature, it actually allows you to pull yourself back into the reality and to pull your prefrontal cortex back online because you're at a grounded and calm and regulated state and so even though it seems so simple it's actually extremely transformational another thing that i'll do is i like to play devil's advocate especially when it comes to trusting my intuition around decisions and so what i'll do is i'll step out of the picture i'll step out of the experience and i'll say you know what if my friend were to ask me the same question and they were in this situation what advice would I tell them? What advice would I give them? So if your friend were to come to you and they would say, you know what, I just got out this really toxic relationship and I'm ready to jump into a new one. You may say something like, take some time to heal because hurt people hurt people. And you want to make sure that you're healed and whole before you jump into another relationship, right? And so the very things that we often want to tell other people or give advice about are often the very things that we need to hear. And so when you pull yourself out of the experience, it doesn't feel as personal and you're able to think from a rational place and to, and to really tune in to what your intuition is leaning you towards and pulling you towards. So after you practice some of these tools, the last and most powerful step is to ask your intuition for guidance, okay? So you've tuned into your intuition, you've quieted all the sounds and the noise, you've processed, you've reflected, you've grounded yourself. Asking your intuition what it's trying to tell you is so powerful. The truth is our subconscious mind knows a lot, but we often try to rational, ration our way through making decisions or try to make decisions on a conscious level. And this is why it feels like pressure and it feels forced and it doesn't always feel aligned. But your subconscious mind knows a lot. And so some of the things that I like to do to tune in and ask myself for guidance is just to ask questions and to see what comes up for me. So I may ask questions like, what's the best way forward? What do I need to do next? What's the next best step I can take in order to lose weight, in order to save money, in order to call in my next client, whatever, right? What do I need to do in order for me to feel calm? What do I need to do in order for me to feel better? And I'll keep breathing and just allowing myself to process. The key here is I'm not attached to any outcome. I don't say, well, what should I do? Should I, should I invest in this course? But I really, really don't want to. And then I just only listen for that. I detach myself from the outcome and I listen to what my body is trying to tell me. When you try to force yourself to come up with an answer, you get mad about what answer comes up, you actually slow down the process and push yourself away from being able to tune in and trust yourself. So stay open to the responses, stay detached from the outcome and give yourself permission to trust yourself. Intuition is a natural part of being human and it can be used as a powerful tool to support you at trusting yourself and making decisions. Now. I'm not saying that you should only use intuition. You should never do your own analysis or research, but having your intuition is a great tool to add to your repertoire, repertoire to be able to access when you need it most. And it has been one of the most freeing tools that I have ever personally had access to. And I'm so grateful for what this goal has taught me and this self-trust has allowed me to see and learn.
So what I challenge you to do is I challenge you to consider how you can begin to implement some of these steps to increase your self-trust and in turn your intuition. Don't forget, the best way to learn is through experience. So give yourself that permission to experience this amazing transformation today.